Three, two, one. What's up, crew? It's Monday, and we are back. Back in the UK, looking ever so slightly browner than when we left a week ago. Already freezing, got goosebumps as I'm talking about this. So I've got my brew in my hand, just had a little cookie, protein cookie thing. And before we crack into this, uh, Lainey's going to join us in a little bit. Let's get you guys up to date on what's going on. So we're back in the UK. It is Monday the 30th of April right now. And tomorrow, the uploads will be back to normal. So video upload Thursday as well as Sunday and tomorrow, Tuesday. I don't know why I said that in such a convoluted way. So basically it uploads every week, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday on the U of Tube. Tomorrow's upload will be the final part of my seven day transformation. And I have got a, a beast of an edit for you guys. So even though I had to kind of take a mulligan on one of the days, I was supposed to finish on the Monday. We flew out on the Tuesday. Saturday ended up screwing up and I ended up having to redo the Saturday on the Sunday. She put me back a day, which meant my seventh and final day of my transformation ended up on the day we landed in Turkey. So you get a sun-filled, fun-filled beast of an edit for my reveal of how I went from day one to day seven. If you haven't seen this series so far, I'll link it in the description below. It's me going from basically shit to fit in appearance only. And I'm doing it simply because I had like a four or five day period where after Lainey's competition, I did some sympathy eating with her. Not sympathy eating. What was it? Joint eating. Togetherness eating. You know, I just, I let the macros go. And I ballooned. Because obviously I started taking an in inconsistent macros, inconsistent food. And I thought, hey, this is a good time to show how when the body looks like untrained and overfed, I'll show you how different it can look in the space of a week if I then go to the other extreme of manipulating my macros and the biology of the body to show you how crazy you can go from one extreme to the other without drugs, without steroids, without super magic mic pills. <laughs> and I wanted to do it because there's been so much bullshit going on in the industry and um, people are constantly always coming in that are new to fitness and asking the same questions over and over. So I'd like to continually repeat and show you guys in a very transparent fashion, how when you see a picture on social media, when you see someone's edit on YouTube, them training, them looking good, them in the sun, them under whatever, looking all happy and glistening and rock, rip, shredded, solid, that that's not how they are all the time. That's how they are in that moment. And outside of that, they're normal human beings. Unless they're jacked up to the eyeballs. In which case, you don't want to be like that anyway. So, it was pretty cool. The transformation went well. It looked good. It will look good. You'll see it beast of an edit really proud of it i think it's uh the bit coming into it the transformation part i really like it i've made it quite fun and uh, a little bit of the holiday in there as well and then we'll get back on the thursday then we'll get back to i have done a moto vlog for you guys covering some questions that you were asking because you wanted me to do one so i went out riding and i answered some questions on the bike so that'd be one and then i also did as requested as per you guys i did a hair tutorial video, but not just me sat in front of a mirror styling my hair. No, no, no. We go to styles, we get the cut explained, and you have Harris, the hairdresser, the entrepreneur, one of my one of my good friends, the buff barber. He explains how and why we cut my hair the way we do and how you style it to get a similar look and what you need to be doing on a daily basis to maintain your look and the products that we use, which are not hugely expensive or anything like that. So you don't need some crazy products, but we've got some cool shit that um, should hopefully help you guys out. So there you go. The next one you were asking for was skincare. I might do that. I don't know. I got some cool shit. Got some simple ideas. Not the most interesting video though. I might just include it in a vlog. Excuse me while I have a brew. Mm. Oh my God, that's good to be. Nobody has tea like the UK. So yes, there we go. Oh, one more thing. The DSR clothing line release. I know, I know. I've been going on about it for about a month. But what you guys need to understand is when we release all the Q&As, all the customer service, that's us. It's on us. So what we don't like to do is release when we don't have the time or are obviously not in the country to be able to respond to your guys' deliveries and questions and orders and everything like that. So we postponed it till the end of this month. And it's now the end of this month. So we will be releasing the new DSR brand jeans and three t-shirts this week. So stay tuned to the Instagrams. Stay tuned to the YouTube. So YouTube, Lex Fitness, if you're not on there already. Instagram at Lex Fitness. The only one that's different to me is Twitter, which I'm 
at Lexanidas. But on Instagram, you can also follow the brand itself, dsr.brand on Instagram. Stay on there. You can also go to the website. Uh, it is www.desire-brand.com. I'm going to be converting that to dsrbrand.com as soon as we can. Just got to get that one sorted. But you can go onto there and you can sign up to the newsletter. Don't worry. It's only us that ever access any of those. So it literally would be me sending you out the company email about releases, dates, and any little sneaky um, discounts for you guys. So if you listen to this podcast now and you sign up, um, I will send out maybe a cheeky crewcast discount code for you guys for when the release is on. Just a little something to say thank you. Cool. I think that's everything caught up. So we're back. Transformation will be done. You'll see that tomorrow on my YouTube channel. Then uh, Thursday, you've got, I think I'll do the styling video on Thursday. Then we'll do the moto vlog on the Sunday. From next week, I'm going to start training for the big three that I talked about doing this year. And that is going to be the Tough Mudder marathon slash get electrocuted and fall in mud shit. And I'm going to be doing that in June. I think we're going for the London one in June. I'm talking to Tough Mudder directly for that. So if you guys want to join in and do this challenge alongside me, literally alongside me, you can come, get involved. We're going to be redoing it all for charity. So I'm going to be setting up a, a GoFundMe or a charity, something anyway, something um, proper where people can just can donate money and we will give it towards a worthy cause that we all choose together. Sound cool? And you can get involved. Get involved. Some of you want to get involved overseas doing your own thing on the same day. That's freaking cool too. So I'll get in touch with all you guys to do with that. So that'll be coming. There'll be a specific sign up for you to be able to come and join me on the day. We're going to have like our own area, some cool shit. I'm talking to Gymshark about maybe having some limited edition t-shirts that you guys will get for joining in. Just I'm going to try and sort out some, some cool things and we're all going to be doing it for a good positive purpose and that's to raise some money for charity. So that'll be cool. And once that's done, we'll then carry through into a boxing camp Talking to a few people about this already because I want to do then a charity white collar boxing match. So I don't know how that'll work out, whether like um, some portion of ticket sales will go to charity or we can do another raising thing like a you just donate to me, keep being able to get battered. <laughs> and uh, I'm also going down to London soon or Mr. Dickerson, Ross Dickerson, is either coming up here or I'm going down to London to see him because he's on a bit of a boxing swing at the moment. So hopefully I'll go and um, have a little bit of chat to him about some ideas that maybe he might have. Maybe we could do something together. Ross, if you're listening, what do you think? Ah, ah, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. And then once that is completed, we will then be going to the final of the three, which will be a physique competition somewhere around the UK. Wherever that'll be, I don't know yet because as always, I try and do a show around my body, not my body around a show. But the point of it all is to show you that you can run a marathon, do cool shit with other people, go do some boxings, out, do things outside of the gym, yet still create a physique that can step onto a stage. So hopefully that will all come sweepingly together by the end of the year. We'll have done all three and we will achieve something really quite special. So I'll let you know what's going on with exact dates and everything like that with Tough Mudder, probably in next week's vlogs and training videos. Excited to get back to deadlifting, excited to get back to routine and back into training. If you were watching the seven day transformation videos, you'll know that I gave you all my macros, my exact breakdowns, even the link to my food log that you could go and see over so you could see what I ate day to day and you could see, again, full transparency, no bullshit. Um, even the supplement side of things, I gave you that. All it was was creatine and um, on the day of the transformation all you'll see that I use again is I keep the creatine in and then I use a pre-workout, non-stimulant pre-workout, the PSI by EHP Labs because it's just a pump formula and uh, and a little bit of other trickery and you'll see how that goes down. So not a lot of money to make a crazy change and I hope that helps you guys out who are spending God knows how much on things every month hoping it's magic because hopefully I can save you guys some money and a bit of heartache and set you on the right path. So that's you up to date with everything going on. Oh, no, one more thing. We have the Gymshark pop-up store, 12th and 13th of May in Birmingham. Same weekend as the Body Power, so if you're in from another country and you're there, you can come and see us for free. All the details will be being released this week. I get my itinerary today. But 12th and 13th of May, we will be in Birmingham at a pop-up store designed and created especially for this Gymshark event. To be myself and the other athletes, I know there's myself, Lovado, David, Laney, Nikki. Um, I know Mel's coming over. Um, Steve will be there. So there's a whole host of us. We're all going to be kicking it together. 
is going to be a fun ass time. It is in a bigger venue than any other pop up done so far. So expect some crazy stuff because this is going to be a real standalone event. So that now has you all caught up to date. And now let's get you caught up to what's going on with us. So back from Turkey, spent a few days away for Lenny's birthday. So we were there for like six days, five, four days, kind of six nights, something like that. Weather was astoundingly beautiful. 30 degrees nearly every day, blue skies and a nice little breeze. So I've come back not too shabby in a couple of days. I make sure I sunblock my tattoos. If you're out in the sun, get that sunblock on your tattoos. You paid for an artist's work to be on your arm to look great, so don't screw it up by destroying it with sun. Factor 50 on that bad boy every day. But other than that, factor 15, banana boat, carroty something or other blended shimmy dimmy dammy that made me glisten in the sun. Like a uh, something from Spartacus. Oh, I've got some short shorts on holiday as well. Ooh, ooh, was I cracking some of those bad boys out. So I have now some ridiculous tan lines that kind of just end just below the dude <laughs> and uh, kind of just towards the root at the top here. Yeah, so I've got this like kind of not trunks, but not shorts tan line. It looks very odd when I look at myself in the mirror naked, which is what I do every day to boost my own. <laughs> I can't even carry that joke on. <laughs> I do not do that. Um, although on holiday, why is it when you're on holiday, the shower in the room is always exactly opposite from the mirror. Like you're meant to be able to just watch yourself shower. Like you're gonna turn yourself on watching yourself lather down. Dude, that's the last thing I wanna see is me washing my own hairy butt cheeks in a mirror across from me. That is not an attractive sight for a male man to see himself do. <laughs> no matter how tanned we get. Uh, turkey though, cool. Liked it, enjoyed it, summer's beautiful. It was pure chill out, all inclusive though. Oh. Ooh, I think I'm done with those places. So we went and thinking it would just be easier because Lainey was still, Lainey's still going to be dieting down. So the reason Lainey did the shows is because she wanted to strip down to get to kind of the show condition she'd been in before. But then she wants to take it past that, break the body all the way down to like its bare necessities and then lean gain out because she hasn't ever really successfully lean gained out properly, uh, which is definitely the hardest part, guys. If you're dieting, dieting is easier because it's short term. The long-term grind is that lean gain out where you have to really control your food on the way out to make sure you don't put on the tubby tub tub. Don't get them titty titty titties unless you're a lady. Then you don't want them buddy buddy buddies. Well, no, you do want the butt at the moment, don't you? What don't you want? Saddlebags, love handles, all that jazz. Tubby tubs. You don't want the tubby tub tummy tubs. Because if you eat, if you go back to eating just normal, straight out of the bat after you've been dieting, your metabolism will be like, hey man, what the hell are you doing? I can't deal with all this fuel. I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna store it here, all up in the side of your ass for later. That go with you? Yeah, I don't care if it's cool with you or not, because you keep eating like this, that's what I'm gonna do. Don't know why our uh, metabolism is a foreigner, but there you go. You learn something new every day. <laughs> oh dear. So, yes, you need to come out, of, once you've uh, finished your diets, make sure you lean gain out. And that means slowly increasing your food over like, at least half the time you were in the diet, bringing it back up to maintenance, and then you can keep going from there. And you obviously want to ramp up your training as you're doing that alongside. Keep cardio in as well, don't, as well. Keep your cardio in as well. Don't just drop that off because you're now done. It's good to stay fit, and plus, your body runs on consistency, and if that's what you've been doing, you can pull it down, but don't knock it out completely. Maybe adjust, instead of being on a treadmill, whatever it was you're doing, go swimming. Do something, oh, like swimming. Holy crap. So on holiday, the gym sucked. Um, it was like 10 kilos heaviest weights. Usual standard thing, you know, a couple of benches, loaded treadmill, more treadmills than weights kind of place. <laughs> Always the way. Um, so I used the time to do different things. Played a bit of basketball, tried swimming. Have not swam. I can swim, don't get me wrong. Did swim all the way through school, but I suck at breaststroke. Like, um... I found out that the reason what my left glute isn't been firing properly, if you've been watching my rehab thing about all that, learning to squat and deadlift again properly, I think I've been like this for a long, long time, even prior to the accident, which kind of set it all off. I think I was a little bit cockeyed from being a kid because I always remember when I was trying to do best stroke, my right leg is fine. Looks just like a froggy frog, just like it should, like rip, rip. But the left one, my left leg, that foot just doesn't turn out. It kind of kicks in like a bit, imagine like a gimpy frog, just meh, meh. So, yeah, instead of a nice swoosh, it's more of a nah. Just what, a swoosh one side and a nah on the other. So, nah. 
<laughs> my breaststroke is a shna instead of a shwoo. And um, so I thought, right, well, that's freaking hard. So let's do that. I'm going to challenge myself. Get in the pool. I'll do some lengths. I did 10 lengths, like, out of the five days of that. I think the three days, I did 10 lengths in a day, each day. Holy crap. Now, it's called swimming. I called it avoiding trying to sink. Because I found out that since I got a little bit heavier with the muscle mass, because I got gains, I sink like a goddamn rock. So not only was I fighting sinking, uh, I was really trying to turn this left foot out and do my froggy frog legs as I really should do for the breaststroke. And it was hitting muscles that haven't been hit in probably a decade. Right? Since I've been swimming at school, when they used to make you do it with a little paddle board and kick your legs properly. Holy crap. So there was like me doing my 10 lengths in the pool, little Nana's overtaking me, giving me a little wink, you know. Oh, getting your hair wet there, boy, doing it wrong, doing it wrong. <laughs> There's me huffing. <laughs> Every other length I'm resorting to front crawl just to ego boost, get my manliness back and overtake the Nana's a bit. Give a bit of a splash. Drowned one of them. No, I didn't really. <laughs> Kidding. She had a heart attack. It didn't help her. <laughs> I'm joking. There was no Nana. Well, there were. There were lots of Nana's, but none of them raised me. And uh, yeah, so I used that time to do something like that. And I didn't pick front crawl or backstroke or the shit I'm good at. No, no, no. I picked the breaststroke, which sucked and was hard. And Jesus, if you if you don't know how to get a back pump, go do 10 lengths of breaststroke. It will pump out your back. You will be the invisible carpet man for at least an hour afterwards. I was walking around like I had a problem with everyone. I looked like that freaking dinosaur from uh, Jurassic Park, the original one, when it does its flared things on the neck. But it was my lats just... Boo! Stood there like a jackass, just flared unintentionally. I'm walking over to Lane for something, going, poke it, poke it now, see it. I ain't even tensing. I ain't even tensing. Yeah. <laughs> but it kicked my ass. The next couple of days, I woke up, I was like, when did I train legs? It was a swimming. So this is why I want, this is why I'm doing these series, is I want you guys to get out there and experience other things and realize that it can really kick your ass regardless. Even if you think it's something that's not going to build muscle, they still can. They're still hitting you. In fact, you should be. Like it shows how much I should be doing that kind of movement, that range of motion, because the body couldn't do it. It didn't like it. And that's because the gym's so just two-dimensional when you think about it. And there's a, we have like, what, six degrees of movement and in the gym we're using three. That's probably completely wrong, but you know what I'm saying. So when I'm on holiday, I want to talk about as well the food. How do you stay on track when you're on holiday? How do you not come back? A tub, a tub, a tub, a tub, a tub. Because <laughs> most of us go on holiday, don't we? We get in shape to go on holiday. So we want to stay in shape while on holiday. So how do you do that? Well, let's cover the people that don't get in shape to go on the holiday. If you're not getting in shape before you go on holiday, fellas, ladies, don't try and get in shape on the holiday. No, no. You're already there. It's too late. Just enjoy yourself. Go hit that buffet. You lather that tummy up with that nice little golden tan, tanning lotion. You wear it proud. You didn't get in shape in time? Cool. Own it. Go enjoy the food. Get stuck on a water slide. <laughs> oh, went on the water slides. Awesome. Plus tested out my GoPro. Um, six, got the Hero 6. So I was whizzing that around all through the water and things like that. Tell you one thing that doesn't like water slides. iPhone 7s. Yeah. Both my cameras on this now fucked up. Full of steam, full of condensation. So that's going back to Apple. What did you do with your phone? Well, I was just sat by the pool. Yeah, uh, just got steamy. Don't know why. Wet towel was on it for a little bit. Really, Mr. Griffin? So you weren't on this slide? Brings up the YouTube videos. Damn it! <laughs> um, what was I talking about? For <laughs> uh, So yeah, go, uh, oh, as well as swimming, I did basketball as well. Played basketball for a little bit. Damn, I need to do that more. That was my life when I was like, 16 to 18, it's all I, 15, 15 to 18, it's all I lived for basketball, I played like four or five times a week, played for two town teams, school team, even went through to nationals, ah, oh, miss it, it's just not a big thing in the UK, it's a shame, should be, it's cool, great sport, can't watch it though, oh, cannot watch it, same with me, like playing football, can't watch it, don't know what, that, what that's about, um, Come back to the sun though, which is nice. So I'm going to try and get my ass outside and start doing a little bit of sprint work for the upcoming training. But back to the food and eating on holiday. What do you do? You're in shape and you're going on holiday. But then when you get to the all-inclusive, oh, they got those 30,000 desserts, 8,000 entrees, 9,000 main meals to choose from. All of them with the option of covering them in cheese. Mm. Which I'd like to say many people on our holiday that we went to see did choose to do. And we're clearly choosing to also do that at home. Holy bajolis. 
I haven't seen so many roly polies in one place for a long ass time. Makes me appreciate my health. I saw one woman who literally, she couldn't sit in a chair with her legs down. She had to sit in a chair and her legs had to have their own chair. She was a double chair woman. She doubled down. She doubled down so much she needed a double chair. Believe that shit? Man, I'm trying my best not to stare, but whew. sometimes, dude, humans, humans make me a little bit mad. They make me, ah, I don't know. It's just that kind of gluttony. I don't know. It makes me feel bad about what we're doing to the planet, especially when you see the waste of food. Like, I hate wasting food. I hate wasting anything. I've been like, like a, even water, things like that. I never leave taps running. I'm always conscious of that. So when you go to these all inclusives and you just see things just being left in piles, I don't know. It gives me a negative vibes, man. So when you get there, you got to be prepared for this. Your mindset's got to be ready. You got to know if you're going where you're going when the food is going to be all inclusive. You're going to have to have some restraint. But I don't mean you can't enjoy yourself. I'm going to tell you how you can enjoy yourself and also stay in shape. So here it is. You're already in shape, by the way. If you're not, hit that buffet. Smash those brownies. When you get home, sort yourself out. But if you're already there, here's the thing. Three meals a day. Stick to them. Try not to snack in between. I know these places have snack jacky things everywhere. Ours is waffles and donuts and pastries and wonderful things. Even sandwiches. But they were all covered in cheese and mayo. So I didn't snack. Stuck to three main meals. Breakfast, what you do, you go down, you have a high protein, moderate carb, higher fat breakfast. So that's like your scrambled eggs, throw in some veggies in there, get some chilies in there, spice up your breakfast time, man. Maybe have some yogurt with some fruit on top to get those carbs in, a bit more protein. Kind of cool, sound good, that kind of idea, that's what you want for your breakfast time. Then you're going to go through to lunch, you're going to have a lean meat with salad. So you go in low carb, low fat, but you're having high protein, lean meat. Again, make it nice. Chuck in some peppers. Get some salsa dips. Get some nice shit. Don't eat plain shit. Still enjoy it. Get the stuff that's in the sauce. Get something like the weird chicken roti there and things like that all the time. Is that how you call it? Beautiful. Curry chickens, things like that. Bang them on a salad. Um, and then, again, you go through to your final meal of the day. Your dinner. Your tea. Whatever you like to call it. Then you have what you want in that meal. You have what you want. Within reason. Don't have eight desserts. Have one. Don't have three baby potatoes. Eat what you normally eat at home. Don't pile your plate, plate fuller than you would at home. I know we have this thing, you've, you're on holiday and you've, you've it's all inclusive and you've paid for it, so you're trying to get your money's worth. But that's not what all inclusive is, people. All inclusive means it's there if you need it. Doesn't mean it's there, you gotta have it. Yeah? There still has to be some human restraint factor here. And that's what you have to prepare yourself for. But if you stick with those three meals through the day, then keep your training, keep your activity up. What's up, Bobster? Come here. Got your coffee? Just covering the final bits of this meal thing. So, when we're on holiday, all inclusives. Um, yeah, so, what was I up to? Did you hear what I was saying when you came in? You distracted me with that good looking coffee. I thought I was a good looking one. And the other good looking one. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was I up to? What was I saying? Three meals a day. Three meals a day. Yeah, it got to that. Um, Enjoying your food. Oh, yeah, don't have more than what you have on your plate at home kind of thing. Don't go mental. And then your activity levels. What a lot of people don't realize is when you go on holiday, you lie your ass down for a lot of the day. You're actually probably less active than when you're at home. And then people wonder why the body composition changes. So try and keep your activ activity levels at least similar to that of home. I'm not saying you have to work out the same as there, but you're out about in the sun, go down to the beach, swim in the pool, go in the sea, jump off the dock. Play basketball, play tennis, make use of the amenities, go for long walks, you know, just keep your activity levels up and keep that body ticking over. And that will keep you on track. And it's a fair thing. Then on your final day, just say, fuck it. And then, yeah, but fuck I it. did that and now I've got swollen ankles. And enjoy the lot. You get some swollen ankles for a couple of days, but you have your final day where you're like, I earned it. And you get your reward. You reward yourself for the being there that week and behaving yourself. And you I have, was very have your day off. You do. And then have your day off. And even then, trust me, we, we tried to do that. I didn't want it. I had a few of the treats yeah. and sweets and things like that. But because you've stayed consistent through the week, you've not been plowing your face with all these sweets all the way through and fats, you don't you don't really crave it that much. So you have a few. And because your body's not used to it, because you've been good before the holiday as well, 
you kind of get overwhelmed by it quite quickly. So you you have a satisfying amount. It's actually not we, required we had to be that much. All week that on our last not day that we were going there was like a pizza place and there was a waffle house and, oh, like, yeah. and a, you know ice cream all this and we were like oh we'll get pizza for lunch and then we'll have waffles in the afternoon and all this kind of stuff and then I was like Are you getting your pizza no I'm not no, really into it didn't want it so like we did have some desserts and we dro- tried all the baklavas tried one mini donut it was okay but like. I, like I do that, that thing me, where that was as bad I get as a mi- I get a mini donut and I I put some caramel sauce in it. I took a few bites and I was like, if I'd have been like, I'd show this donut a good time. I would have finished that donut like but, I was with the brownie. like you were with the brownie. Yeah, but yeah, finished. but because I bit into it and I was like, nah, it's all right. Yeah. I didn't finish it. I had a few bites and I put it in the bin. There were some things I literally put in my mouth, didn't like it, and spat them out. Yeah, because I was like, true. I'm, not, I, I'm not. I'm not going to say like I'm like. I'm not saying like I'm some kind of weirdo who chews food and then spits it out. I'm saying like I chewed it and I was like, this isn't worthy of me swallowing. Yes, yeah. I was like, so I was just like, no. Yeah, because when you eat turkey, you get those desserts that look amazing, and then yeah. so it gets something that looks like this bland. gorgeous. How do they do blackberry it? dewy cheesecakey thing? And you cut into it, and it tastes like coconut apricot. And you're like, how? Yeah. How? Oh, Cause like they're confusing I, to Like, look I at. make healthy desserts, and I manage to make healthy desserts taste amazing. And that's, like, with, like, limited resources. I'm like, they can put whatever crap they want into their desserts, and they still don't taste great. They no, never taste. Some of them taste. did. Some of them were really great. The brownies were I good. Think, I think there's a different... I think because we have desserts in England, I think we have a tendency to put a lot of oil in our desserts over here. So we get sugar and oil. I don't think they do that over there. Oh, Lex. I, no, do you think to bake with though baking? I'm yeah. talking about baking, not cooking the meats. I'm talking yeah. about baking. I think they were probably using vegetable oil rather than the butter, and that was the problem. All oh, right, okay, fair the butter enough. Butter is like sweeter. You'd, You'd know better than me on that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but some of them were. So, but some of the bits were great. But that's what anyway. So that covers you for eating away and and getting away with it. You can do that. And if you want to eat more on one day, or you want to have a couple more days where you just go, mm, fuck it. Depends on how long you're away for as well. Fuck it. Then you just you do some excessive movements on the days surrounding it you kind of buffer for it same goes when you're back at home day, every day. if you want more more macros on a day and it's like an it's, it's not your norm just go do some extra extra calorie burning that day mm. just counterbalance it everything about everything about everything is balance there's yeah. it's not all or nothing and that's what we need to get out of this mindset of it's it's not just a yes or no it's a it's a medium there's a balance particularly for people who maybe have been overweight in the past you can struggle with the whole thing of i've gone over my macros so fuck it because i used to be like yeah. that and that's where my problem used to lie and i had to get over that man that mentality of i haven't eaten my macros so i might as well eat everything because that this is the best i've ever been on holidays oh yeah it? you were really good because i literally used to have that issue when where we if to- i over i was like oh well i might as well just keep just eating. sometimes you just you just would just lose the will to control yourself like when we were in Mexico yeah. with the peanut butter you were like tablespooning that shit onto things yeah and that was just passed after a show like this it was and like then just... that's a probably a good one actually when you're in a couple it gets super hard for me to then be like knowing that that's gonna cause issues for yeah. you afterwards but to be able to say something to you at the time it's like I'm attacking you yeah. like you can't have that whereas what you're trying to say as a partner is you don't need that much peanut butter. You know you don't. But then you're like, hey, fuck you. Don't tell me what I can and can't eat. Yeah. So then you can almost end up in arguments on holiday. Which oh, you I, see was, a I, lot was, of I was almost like, eating to spite him. Yeah, then you get that way. And but then I've talked to other girls just, about it. It's that it. negative, neg- you get a negative connotation mm-hmm. with food and this thing. So It the, is down to the person who's doing the eating though, because it is in their mindset. It's not your problem. Just, yeah, if you someone's know, like saying they're, they're something... They're taking it out on you. If someone's well. saying something in a, in a... And they are saying it in a loving way, in a way of... You know you're not going. You're going to regret that later. You, you can have you have some of that, but don't you don't don't have all that on your plate because then you're going to be you're going to want to eat it all. Yeah. They're trying to help you as long as it's not bullying you. Going, oi, fatty, why are you eating that? Yeah. That's not right. But if someone's just trying to look out for you, don't kick them in the nuts. Mm. Don't bite their face off for doing it. They, tr- they care. There's there's no nice way of saying, dude, you don't need that much shit on your plate. Yeah. There's no nice way of saying it. And to be fair, I think we've I'd rather have someone just be good at that. I- like helping each other in that way like even earlier I was saying to Lex like you know for scheduling this time I was like you know I'm not trying to get at you right now I'm I'm not trying to be negative or you know be what do you call uh, that naggy naggy Nagging? yeah I don't want to be nagging him but like I just feel like Lex has such potential to get shit done if he just organized his time and I think before 
like maybe even a year ago, if I tried to say that to you, it would have just come across as me nagging you. It but now I know how to Here's the thing. communicate. With Everything's to do with tone. Yeah. How you say something. Tone mm. it properly. Because things come across badly when you say them with, I don't know, what's... Not aggression in the voice, but you know, if someone says something sternly rather than caring, mm. then the brain immediately takes a I'm being told off kind of line of yeah. um, attack with what someone's saying think, to them. So it is yeah. all about the tone and the way you approach it. And it is difficult and there is no perfect way of doing it. Yeah. And you have to work it out as a couple. I think you, you, you have to get to that point where, like even earlier, we were talking, we went to the house today and we were talking about it and I was like, you were getting irate about it, but it was coming out, out like you were being irate with me. So I had to say, like, you know, adjust your tone. Yeah. Because, like, literally, he was trying to talk about it, but it sounded like he was, like, blaming me for the house because of his tone. To you? So, yeah. That's how it sounded to but you. But that's what I mean. Like, but as soon as I this, said, Lex, that's the way perfect, you're saying that's it That's a perfect wrong. example. Yeah. I wasn't saying it like that in any way, yeah, but yeah, that's yeah, how you took it in your mind because of the tone in yeah. which it was said. Yeah, well, exactly. As soon as I said to and you, my, to, adjust your to tone. To break it down, the reason there was a tone is because... I, there was a part of the house which was basically I could push this fucking wall over with my own body weight like it was coming down and Lainey, Lainey just said yeah we can just replaster that bit and then I went I was like when you get that teacher voice and I went no that was falling down so then Lainey takes that tone change as me changing my mood with her yeah which is a downside on both of us like the tone I need to adjust and she also needs to not get a bit thicker skinned on that set. I don't think I do need to get thicker skin because I think that I'm just a woman and I'm sensitive and that's the way I am and you just need to adjust your tone. <laughs> so you're bailing. You're bailing on having to No, do I'm, I literally, in that sense, there's a lot of things that I will adjust in our relationship to like be, you know, like I'm, I'm able to take it down a peg and like things like that and adjust my tone for you. But definitely in that respect, I think if I feel like I'm being attacked in any way, whether it's purposeful or not, I'm, I have the right to say, no, you need to adjust that. You need to backstep it there, buddy. I think it is a good point to just... Um, we've I personally developed a really good ability of to... When I start digging into a hole, I just stop talking now. Don't try to talk your way out of, a, out of a situation. It's the worst. If you say something that's like in error and you're like, oh, I just made a big conversational... I've just taken a conversational dump on, on this, this moment in time. Yeah. If you do that, literally stop and go, sorry about that, just took a conversation dump. Let's rewind, ignore what I just said, and move on. Literally say that sentence. People will laugh and carry on with the day. Yeah. But if you then try and explain your conversational dump about why that poop just left your mouth, you're not going to be able to explain it well. People are going to just be like, nope, I've made my mind up about that sentence yeah. already, and you ain't getting... So, yeah, just it's learning to um, step back from yourself, I think, a lot of the time. Yeah. I think so, I think yeah. generally in not just in marriages or in boyfriend oh, just, or no. in just yeah, like business, general yeah conversations like with interviews, friends anywhere friends yeah. one of the best things you can do is apologize for something you've said wrong in a conversation because a lot of times people get very angry because they're hurt by something you said it mightn't be the full blown conversation like the end result might be the same but you saying I was wrong to say that 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 way or that word or whatever you said mm. It, it can go miles to, um, you know, mend relationships, just in general with your parents, with anyone. If you just say, I was wrong to say that, and you take credit for what you've done wrong, yeah. it can, like, I know, like, if I say to you, you know, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. Straight away, you're willing then to kind of go, well, I shouldn't have said that. True. Whereas if the two of you are at a standoff of not... Mexican standoff. Yeah, but if you, if, like, with anyone... That's true. And, and I think apologize. it is very hard, though, as, like, human beings to admit to your faults. Especially if you're a driven person. I find that a lot with people who are kind of, like, self-driven and have to kind of have their own motivation inside them. A lot of time, I'm unwilling to back down because it's in their nature to just yeah. not back down from things. Um, and which is great. But it's like anything. We get those dads who are great businessmen and terrible family men. Mm -hmm. It's because they don't know how to change from being that great businessman into the family home, which you have to do. But a lot of people don't ha can't ha don't have that because their talent is that business line. Yeah. And then the home thing isn't. And it just, that's a lot of people, I know personally I've had that, uh, friends who've had that with fathers are super successful. And you can accept them for who they are and they can do their best. Yeah. But sometimes people just aren't great in other situations and they're fantastic in, in another another niche and things. I think so even, yeah, like you have to accept dad, people for who they are as well. And you all say that about my dad. Because like my dad's yeah. like, he's there and he's my dad. But 
when I was growing up, he wasn't the best dad in the world. Like he wasn't, you know, there to talk, to converse with. Yeah, I but think I think moving a, a people as as you get times. older, you kind of just have you always say, "I'll let it go." And yeah. like you do, because like do. at the, the end of the day, he is better. my dad, and he just accepts that's the way they were. Like that was the way he yeah. was brought up. So he that's the way re- he, he makes, how he made his relationships. And since I've I've known him, obviously five years now yeah. like, he's made real efforts with you all the way through I, I, I like him yeah. good old Don I like you Don you're a good man I don't know if he listens to podcasts like no this. but if you do I, 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 I mean, doubt mean, the Don, Don listens to we call Everyone's my dad good. the Don and people like that yeah because he kind of is the Don of our house so my pops uh, who my my stepfather really he was a, he's an amazing businessman amazing but in terms of family and things like that he's uh, he was raised quite quite raw and that but it comes from how him. they're raised, though. Yeah, like, he was raised quite raw, dad. which works perfectly yeah. for his business because you want to see him go to town and business. He just tears people to. Yeah. He just gets like not in a bad. Like he's just so, so. Uh, what's the word? Thing. Not forceful, but just persistent and driven and tactful. I'd say he's very. I'd, but I've all, never met him, and I think all, I'd be intimidated by him. Yeah, no, yeah, and it's but it's all it's all a goal of getting something off somebody at the end of it. So it is essentially. You've got to break that person down to get to that thing that you want. Mm. You don't these these top end businessmen. They don't get shit for being nice. Yeah. They get things for being clever, and so that then crossover doesn't work in the family home. Just mm. causes tension. So especially if your partners are a complete opposite and a homebody and all that kind of thing. Yeah. So there is those. So yeah, it is definitely how. But that's it. We all grow up with different things and different people, and we all attempt to Everyone maybe has different backgrounds. Then you pass on to the next generation, which is yourself, and then to your kids. You try and better each time, don't you? So eventually, down the line, you end up with a structured, good balance within your family. And it's good. Yeah. I mean, I think we, what we all go through in life makes us who we are, and I don't think we should try and forget it. I think we should uh, own, it. own it. Yeah. And you work, you create a positive from it. If it yeah. was bad experience you had, you make sure you don't put that onto other people. If it's good experiences, then you make sure you learn from them and you would, you I put them into your own life. I actually thought about this question the other day. Just It just popped into my head. And I was like, if someone asked me, is there anything in life that I'd regret or like do differently? And like there's things that like I'm kind of like, oh God, you know, I wish I hadn't bought that house in Dublin. But if I hadn't bought my house in Dublin... A lot of things probably wouldn't have happened now in my life. So even though that that was one thing that I'd like to just delete from my life, but without changing the future, but you can't do that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So like if, if that didn't happen, I definitely would have been a completely different person to who I am now because I feel like that pushed me into the gym and multiverse, the multi universe. What? Or like sliding doors kind of thing. Yes, yeah, it's parallel universes. Yeah. And each one, different decisions made, or each decision is made an infinite amount of times. Mm. Be interesting, wouldn't it, to be able to see if, if different but forks do you, in do the But do you road agree with that? Like things that you kind of, like, were, you know, you oh, regret, at the time, but at, no, at the, the same time, time. the stuff I've done, at the time, worst thing in the world to happen to me. Yeah. Like, my world's ended, this is dog shit, this sucks, everything's crap. Yeah. And then if that hadn't happened to me, I wouldn't be, I yeah. wouldn't be where I am now. And, like, I know it's all well and good. Like, you know, when you're going through the shit of situation, a breakup or someone has died or something like that. Um, yeah. And you think it is the worst in the world. And, like, it, at that time, it probably is the worst thing in the world. Yeah. But you have to something. think, like, everyone has been through shit in their life. And every bit of the, the negative, like, the losses that I've had, the heartbreak that I've had, that makes me a much more, like, calm, focused caring person than I ever was before that because you have an experience to draw upon that you it's don't like want it, to it gives me empathy give other people definitely yeah. yeah definitely I definitely feel for people a lot more and I just give people my time a lot more it makes you appreciate what you have a lot more all these mm. kind of things so if you're going through a shit time of any kind like whether you've lost your job blah 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 you just like even though like there might be the tiniest little bit of a silver lining just try and look for it because yeah, it is there it's, shit happens yeah make the best of it like What's that saying? When life gives you lemons, make, make margaritas. Make margaritas. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's. I know it's a silly saying, but it does. It does. It's it's yeah. it's those of those people that take rise a situation and, and rise out of it again. They always come back better and stronger. Yeah. It's like the first time. Let's talk about that. Girlfriends cheating on you. If hopefully some of you will never have to go through this, but if you do, if you do, I never cheated on Lex. I'd like to point out. I've cheated on Lenny loads. Me and Bob, we get it on all the time. Hey, Bob. Bob's the minion. Did we call him Bob or is he Dave? I don't know. I didn't know he had a name. I hadn't named him. No, they did. They told me what his name was. I think he's Dave. Okay. Might be Bob. Anyway. Who's um, 
Uh, the crew. Okay. Yeah, because I had him when you I weren't like, when I, when they... you weren't here. It was me and Bob. Oh, I'd say he's full of conversation. Oh yeah, he loved it. Yeah. It was one about bananas. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. For those of you, I hope none of you. I I well, I don't know. Do I, I think I hope, everyone's either do I hope none of you go through it? Cheat. I don't know. I don't know if I do hope I've none of you go through before. it. I've cheated before. I think, admit it. I think, I think maybe it's good to have it go through it, but not not if you're in a relationship that involves long-term things like houses or kids or anything like that. Hope If it happens, I hope it happens when you are just fledgling relationships. I think it can, it can happen at any time around. in your life. Of course and, it can. And maybe even if it's you but that does Let me finish my point or else okay. I'll forget. When it happens, think of it like this. You ever been punched? No, not never been properly punched. I've been slapped a lot by my sisters. Nah, it doesn't Hair count. Hair pulling. So, does the idea of somebody punching you in the face make you go, "Oh fuck, don't yeah, want that"? Yeah, that would be okay. really sore on right. my eye, especially my eye. When you get punched in the face for the first time, you realise, ah, oh, ain't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Don't get me wrong; it's not nice. You're not like, "Oh, do that again, please." But it'll catch you, and you're like, "Oh." Right, is that it? Unless somebody, obviously, if your first punch is right in your nose and it breaks it, then unfortunate. <laughs> You've taken the worst. But then even then, nothing's going to be as bad as that again. And that's what getting cheated on is like. So if something shit's gone out on with you recently, trust me now, that pain that you feel from the first time it happens, you will never, ever, ever feel like that again. Yeah. Because it feel will just not... generally... Not, not only will you not feel like that again, but I guarantee, because a lot of time when people cheat on other people, it's because... People are trying to be too con- too controlling in a relationship. We're excluding the fact that you're just dating a prick, okay? Maybe it's like I know Sometimes in my relationship. I know in I know in my relationship. I was too, trying to be too controlling because I was scared of being cheated on, which probably drove them to do it. Yeah. Because you're not being you and you're being too controlling. It just drives people away. Once it's happened to you, you realize you have no control over something like that. You have no control over the other person. So just fucking let shit be. You shouldn't try and control anyone anyway gonna, in a relationship. No, but it doesn't matter. People do. That's life. It's human. You don't control me. It's life. It's human. Get me a tea. <laughs> no. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> I just lost dinner for that. <laughs> people, people do, in relationships, control other people. And they, they inevitably break down. This um, is not an advertisement for controlling people in relationships. Yeah, but it's negative because it will break no, down. No, it's not a good thing at all. What are you not understanding from me saying it will break down? <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. Right. So, you made me lose my train of thought again now. Good, because I didn't like that train of thought. No, it's a good thing. When you, So, well, that's it. So, when it happens and you, it happens to you, you realise you have no control of the, of the people. You can't control the people. No matter how much you want to try and bubble wrap a situation. I'm not talking about controlling as in like you're not allowed out the house and shit like that. I mean just you try and bubble wrap things. You like Some of you guys might not want your girls hanging out with other guys. And things, simple things that just make I other people that's nervous. That's a pretty big thing. Don't hang out. With, you know, but you know what I mean? There's those things. Those, the, the, the one-on-ones that everyone kind of goes through when they're dating. That like They don't like them stuff. doing that. Things that make them jealous. Yeah. You realise that all those things, you have no control over them. You have no control of other other people and you have no control over whether someone's going to go and do something to you. So once you have that freedom of realising, oh, so it's not my job to stop that shit happening. Your relationships after that one will actually probably, if you accept what's happened, be better because you yourself in the next relationship are a more um, easygoing individual. And you just trust the other person to go off and do what they're going to do? Yeah, we should. In any relationship, you should trust the other person. Of course. But you, it's just like more of a, meh, cool. Yeah. And then if it happens, you're like, well, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Because that is the life. That is life. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. You can't control it. So don't worry about it. It's like worrying about things you can't control is what will drive you insane. You yeah. used to do that a lot. You used to worry about things that weren't in your control, like in day-to-day life. But that's, I, and that would make I, you really anxious as a, past, as a feel and in, like make you feel anxious inside. Yeah. And since you've kind of released that, which is the exact same thing, it's yeah, just a I different be, circuit. I had to be hypnotized for that. But still, either way, you dealt with it, and you it's a different circumstance and it's a different um, source that's causing it. Yeah. But it's still the same result at the end. Yeah. And once you that feeling was gone, how much freer were you? And how much more relaxed were you? And just made you brought out you more as a person. Yeah. So. You know, some shit seems bad at the time, but sometimes it can actually shape you and make you, you have better. To, you have to allow the bad things to kind of not happen, but you have to just allow them to 
go through your body and you have to deal with them because the reason I had such anxiety and everything is because I didn't deal with it at the time and I just kind of like put it in a little box in the back of my head and was like trying to get through regular day-to-day life and when anything went wrong then this little box kind of opened a little bit and was like no we don't like this and like was trying to take it just was taking away from me enjoying normal life not mm. like even stressful situations just normal life like going on holidays or anything would have been stressful for me yeah. because it was like oh my god it's not something could happen yeah this could happen that could happen so like i still get stressed about things but on a normal level now because like i think it's normal to feel anxiety about things like you know it's normal to no, feel I, anxiety yeah. you, shouldn't, like, you shouldn't be completely devoid of anxiety it's a good no, yeah but yeah. we're talking about things that basically cripple you yeah and like i was like at a point where if my asda delivery didn't arrive on time i was like getting like Starting, upset yeah. yeah and like well because you were create what it is is you create a trigger yeah so and once a trigger for a feeling and then if you if you condition yourself to have this same response to this trigger no matter how small that trigger becomes you get the same response which yeah. is overloaded for what the the reason was and that's why it's just reconditioning that mechanism and that's why the hypnotism came in for you it was really good yeah because it helped you just basically reset the mechanism and how you dealt with that feeling yeah, it was like, I, I, it helped me deal with things that I didn't really even realize that I, I, so I subconsciously impressed. was dealing with every day and like did not know. If you'd asked me every day, how are you? I'd be like, fine. And I felt fine. Do but you then think I you're wasn't. susceptible to hypnotism? Or did you go in thinking, I ain't going to be able to be hypnotized? I really didn't think it was going to work, but they, it's just like, it's, it's the not, way of it's relaxing not, your it's mind. Not, it's and not you a do deep fo- sleep. You will no, be a you're chicken. Conscious. Or, you'll, you'll be a chicken when I ring this bell. It's more of... You are conscious. You're sitting in a very comfortable position and you are made feel comfortable by the hypnotherapist. And you literally sit down. And at the start, like every week, he got a little bit deeper into my subconscious because I would literally be fighting him because I didn't mm. want to talk to this stranger about it mm. and each week he got deeper in and he was like sometimes I'd cry sometimes I'd laugh sometimes he said he could see it all like the expressions coming up through my face and I didn't realize I thought I was just sitting like this you have expressions even when you're texting yeah I am very when expressive. you're texting you're like mm, 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 like that so mm. you as you said you have a smile frown smile frown yeah it's funny when I read messages and stuff. But, but that's cool. I like that. And I liked the, the one thing that I... For me. Do you know the one? I was like, man, yeah, give it a go. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with anything like that. Like, give things a go. Don't just wipe yeah. them off. Give them a try. But the one thing that really instilled kind of a confidence in this guy with you was the first time you went, what you think is a lot of these things you think are, um, what do they call them? Charlatans? Charlatan when you're faking things. Like those people that pretend I to speak to dead people. I, I kind of felt like he was going to just try and get as much money as he yes, could out Yes, that's me. it. When the first time you went, he went... But I'll probably get through this in four sessions. So immediately he wasn't there to make money out of you. Yeah. He says, he was, we just go for as many sessions as you need. It may be two, it may be five, we don't know. And yeah. it turned out that it was four sessions. And it wasn't that expensive. It was £60 per session. Each session was maximum about two hours, but sometimes it was a little bit shorter because yeah, he just kept going until he was done because he was yeah. like speaking not to me, but my subconscious. And he asked me questions. This was the weird thing that I, this is kind of the strangest thing that if you asked me um, certain questions about dates, I would have said like consciously I would have said, you know, um, oh I was twenty seven when that happened. Yeah. And I like literally if Lex had asked me that day that I went to the hypnotherapy, it was about my parents separating, and he was like, what happens at this age at twenty two and I or whatever age it was. And I can't even remember now. That's what a point. Do you know what I mean? And like subconsciously, I was able to just tell him straight away what age it was. Isn't that so weird? Because that would not, it's not even, I'd have to actually think about it right now to, to know. Yeah. It's mad, isn't it? I think that's really weird. It's cool. I liked it. And definitely, yeah. I, I noticed an instant change in you. Instant. Yeah. It's amazing. It got better and better. And like, I'm not saying I'm perfect or that I'm completely ever been mentally perfect. stable. Never tried to be fucking perfect either. <laughs> I it's good it, to have a little bit of instability. Was, right? A little t- bit of an edge. He told me all stories about, not that he g- gave any names away or anything like that or gave any pers- like super personal details, but he told me other stories about other um, people that he treated. And it ranged so much that it was like one guy was just, he was an athlete. And he felt that he was um, being held back uh, in being successful. He was an Olympian and he said he wasn't, he wanted to break all these records and stuff. And he said something mentally 
was holding not physically he yeah, felt yeah. it was mentally and it was and it just turned out that it was something from his childhood or something with his dad and it was like one conversation that he'd had with his dad and that literally and that one it, conversation gave him a bit of doubt in his head. yeah yeah. And they, there was like other people who were like it's, it's weird. What yeah. think think now of the the one dumb thing that you can remember crystal clear like it was yesterday, but it has absolutely no meaning to your life. Yeah, I've got one. It was when if you listen to this, John and Pete, right? The two of my buddies from when we were young. We used to do every weekend. I'd be at John's house. We'd be all doing dumb stuff. I remember one one. This is how daft it is. Pete stayed over on a Friday night. I turned up on the Saturday, and on the Friday night they'd obviously watched a movie or something like Top Gun. And there was a quote from the film, and it was um, shave against the grain or something really insignificant. And when I turned up on the Saturday morning there like that, that, we were getting ready to go and do something. And it was at that age where we were starting to get facial hair, turning into men, manly men. <laughs> and um, Still waiting for that day, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but don't boom, shh, get a bob. <laughs> um, yeah, and they said something, as we were going out, it was like, something came in a conversation, and John just said to Pete, I remember it now, we went, we know how to shave, don't we, Pete? And Pete went, yeah, against the grain. And I just remember at that moment in time, feeling so out of the loop, out of it, out of that friendship circle, yeah. like I'd really missed something. And it, they hadn't, like, yeah. they won't even remember even saying it 15 minutes later. Yeah. But for me, it stuck with me for like 10 years. It's ridiculous. Are you over it now, no, I'm not quite over it, no. Do you want to watch the movie with me, no. I, John and Pete, I want us all to shave together and say in unison, against the grain, and rewrite <laughs> the history. But yeah, let's think of those dumb things that you can remember that you've held on to. Think about the stuff that you can't even remember, that's still swimming around in your brain, that may be causing those little bit of doubts and little bit of issues that you, you find yourself when you get in a tough situation or feeling a certain way. And again, it's just that trigger of having that feeling and then that memory comes flooding back. And I think that's what a lot of hypnotism is, is they put you in a sense of emotion. They put you in an emotional state and that draws back memories. I really do. Because for me, it smells. You can put a random smell in front of me that I've smelt when I was eight years old and immediately that memory of whatever that smell was will woof come back. There's a perfume. I have no idea what perfume it is, but every time I smell it when I walk through the street and it's very infrequently, it immediately reminds me of my elementary school teacher, Mrs. Gooseberry. And I say elementary school because at the time I lived in America and I went to Rose Hill High School in Tennessee. Yeah, I stayed in Tennessee for a year. That's right. I was hick. <laughs> Just for one year, my mum did a sandwich course. And immediately when that smell hits my nose, bam, Mrs. Gooseberry. She's a lovely lady. Yeah, weird. Cool though. Funny how the brain works. That's cool. Don't know how we got onto that. I like that tangent. That was, that was cool. What else have we learned? Oh, let's finish on this one. My toes hurt. Yeah. Oh, my toes hurt. And, uh... I can hear her dog. Yeah, puppies at the door. Uh, we got to pick, just pick the puppies back up so they're home. They've they look Roxy great. Just been Roxy has a fluffy ass because she's half molting. She's not even, she can't even bother to fully molt. So she's got like, these tufts. Yeah, she's she got tufts a bit, of fluff on she her She looks like, like a, like a kind of malnourished, like, like a hair gone wrong. Yeah. <laughs> giant, giant messed up rabbit but uh yeah my toes hurt and they've hurt for a while and i thought it was from when i went to mma and it was winter so i was resting again and obviously i jumped straight back in because my brain knows how to do stuff my body's just got to play catch up when you haven't done it for a while and i thought i was hurting my toes like doing the shooting on the mats because obviously you're barefoot and things as well and i thought cold weather cold feet mats bouncing around on your toes i thought I strained the tendons and then this pain came back a couple of weeks late again and I'm like, well, I'm not doing the fucking MMA at the moment. So why are they hurting? And Lainey, who mentioned previously, was like... It's build up of uric acid. It's uric acid. Have you got your... And at the time, I was like, meh. Nah. At the time, I, I, was, I, I went more with the... I've strained my tendons. So I've been stretching my toes every, every morning when I wake up, like flexing them out, bringing them back. Which probably is making it worse. Well, it actually went away for a little bit. So I thought that's what it was. And then it came back. So here's the thing. If you have a buildup of uric acid in your body, it's basically because you're either dehydrated, so you're not drinking enough each day, which I definitely am not doing. Because I drink more, I drink about a litre and a half of water. And the rest of my fluid comes from... Considering I drink three litres minimum. Yeah. I and drink I'm a lot tea and... Which, by the way, tea doesn't dehydrate you, right? Coffee doesn't dehydrate you. You take in more liquid when you drink a tea than you pee out from drinking the tea. Okay? It just doesn't hydrate you as well as water does. But it doesn't dehydrate you. I wouldn't consider it water so, though as so, your intake. Blow that myth up your ass, people. 
But um, yeah, so basically I need to be drinking more water and I haven't been. So your kidneys can't remove enough of this uric acid from your body. And what happens is you get these little crystal buildups in your joints and it can be ankles, elbows and big toes. That's my big toes have been kicking my ass. I'd like to point out that I did say to Lex like six yeah. months ago, Lex, that's uric acid, it's gout. And, but you see, gout is really associated with <laughs> no. people on rich diets, but that's pretty yeah. much what it is. No, it's not gout yet. It, yeah, the moment, it will be. It, what it can turn into gout, yeah. which I thought was like, I was like, what? No. That's a world war disease. I ain't getting it's not. that. I'll tell you what. Um, Trench foot. Uh, no. <laughs> gout is actually like, um, it runs in families for one. And yeah, some people are more susceptible to it. And you have to be very careful with your diet and with your intake yeah. because rich foods like... Um, um, so this is what I found out. Yeah, purines in your diet yeah. are what cause it. High, rich Foods rich in purines. So you're talking about... Um, Gamey meats. Like f- fish with high... high metallic content like mercury content that's like tuna anchovies sardines you want to avoid things like red meat and liver these like uh, anything from an organ even chicken is like moderate so you can't so especially for somebody like us gamey meats meats, but chicken is like medium so if you're overloading on chicken you can actually end up with a too high a purine level in your body so you've got to be careful you've got to start looking to your diet and what's doing it also your hydration levels but then you can also counteract it so what i've started doing squeeze like your half a lemon and you add also some apple cider vinegar yeah. every day in some water and that helps combat this um excessive acid level in your blood to be honest it's meant to help with your gut as well but yeah there's these added benefits to doing all this so talking about lady saying i need to get in better routines this is what i'm going to start doing i'm going to start journaling as she says to structure my days better i just think journaling sounds so gay yeah it and does like, that's what i do but like i i do it every night but i just don't call no, it journaling no you probably just made gay people angry um but gay people just don't journal as much and then we won't <laughs> no, <laughs> no do you know it's, what it, it's, it's not it doesn't sound it, it, i didn't mean a gay in the homosexual way i just meant gay as in listen i think we sh- i'm still using the word listen if i call my mate gay i'm not calling him homosexual it's a completely different connotation so sticking with it man but i don't say it in a homophobic way ever because that's i just think it sounds so a bit wrong. Foofy. but if somebody says it like laney just said it don't get mad don't get mad Come on, balance. I don't mean to everything in life. Everything in life is balanced, people. Yeah. We, anyway, it's not this soft now. I don't. I, I don't really use the word journaling because I just think it sounds a bit train spottery. Yeah. Be geeky. And um, but that's technically what it is: is journaling. And but it really does help organize people. And like I'm a very organized person anyway, and I do it. So I've suggested very strongly to Lex that he just gets into the habit of writing down his daily, weekly goals that are not just work-related, because I feel like he gets bogged down in work, but also socially related, food-related, training-related, and not a, just, like, content-related. so obscure to me. But I'm going to start doing it. And so part of my routine is going to be just creating a routine, and it's going to start with this apple cider vinegar and lemon in the morning and water. So I'm hydrating. You when you wake up, hydrate yourselves. Get in the habit of doing that as well, because I don't do that enough. And then... Um, and to be honest with you, it held me back a little bit with the MMA because my toes were hurting and I thought that was causing it. So I started to pull back from it a little bit. So if this is what it's been now, it means I can just get back into this full swing, get back into the training, then back into the boxing. And I've actually got more confidence now knowing that it's not my toe tendons getting messed up and it's not arthritis, which is another worry a lot of people can get, which is hereditary. So that's cool. That's something I learned whilst being on holiday because my toes started hurting on holiday. I was like, I ain't doing anything to make my toes hurt. And uh, so there we go. If you're having painful, if you've got pain in your toes, ankles, or elbows, just look into your lactic, uh, your uric acid levels. Um, you can get tested by your doctor. Uh, just go check it out. Might might be just that. It can also lead to gallstones as well, and that's painful, so you don't want that to happen. Really? Yeah. Okay, I'm glad. Let's nip this in the bud, people. Anyway, we're coming up on that hour. So that's us. Monday Crewcast. Done. Back on track. Um, next video up, as said before, on Tuesday. Then it'll be Thursday and Sunday as per normal. Tomorrow's video, the Tuesday video, will be the final part of the seven-day transformation where you get to see me reveal the awesome body that was created within seven days. And I was jacked on the day. Lainey was there. I was jacked, people. Jacked. Almost as jacked as I was. (laughs) So, and and it's a kick-ass edit coming your way. Other than that, I think... Oh, if you feel the time, if you love us enough, please leave us a review on the iTunes Um things the thingamajiggy the ipod the itunes ipod the crew cast leave a, a review submit a review for us and give us a rating because it will actually help share this podcast
podcast yeah, and get it growing. more people listening to us. More people we can get listening, the better. That you want us to cover yeah. in future... Doesn't always have to be fitness ...casts related. and things like that. Give me some ideas for future videos as well. I'm going to be back, I'm back doing the motor vlogging and things like that. The weather appears to be with us now, so that's lovely. The sun is shining. It's not as warm as Turkey, but I will take blue skies and sunshine that's cooler any day of the week. So I'm going to be getting out on the bike and covering some subject matter on that front. Other than that, you got anything? No. Anything you need to know? Told you about it. Body power, weekend. We will be at Gymshark pop-up store, 12th and 13th of May in Birmingham, UK. Details come this week. Videos back to normal. We have come a nice... Come see me. Come see me. Not Lex. Come we have a nice me. tan. Come and see us. Get some photos whilst we're tanned. Come, come and count, count them. Come and draw on Lainey's face. Do a dot to dot with her freckles. Oh my God. <laughs> Be a big squirrel. <laughs> I have a theory that it makes it look like a squirrel. <laughs> That's it. We're done. We're out. This is it. Thanks for joining us. Please leave us a subscription. Not a subscription. Leave us a review. Comments below. Lots of love. Later, Gator. Later, Gator. And we are out. A boom, baby.